So this week we're looking at some of your models. Right, some of the laser cut wood. Some of them are prefabricated, others I've come up with. Yeah, this one was pretty neat. And this coffee shop, you did a whole series of coffee shops. Oh, I know. This one was a birthday present for my daughter. That turned out so neat. Now, oh, some of this fun. came with a kit, and a lot of this is just stuff you scratch belt. Well, I'm never happy with what they provide, so I always add to it. One of the things I love to work on are these laser cut models. Aren't they? And these train models. Oh man, I really think they're neat. Look at this. And we just picked up two new ones from our duck. Right. A, a caboose that's custom made for you. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and a locomotive like this one, only different than this one, of course. Yeah, bigger. And these are really cool. I get a kick out of these book nooks. Oh, aren't they fun? They look like a book when they're sitting on the shelf, but when you open the book up, it's not a book. No, it's a little teeny model, and they are tiny. This one is Venice. It's sort of like taking a little mini vacation to build one of these. I'd like to take a major vacation I and would actually too. go to Venice. I would too. <laughs> And this is the Balloon Festival. One of these days we're going to make it to the Balloon Festival. I don't think there's an actual steam train at the Balloon Festival. You never know, but there's a steam train on this layout. That's the coolest part of this. And then, of course, lights. No model is complete if it doesn't have lights. No, not at all. But I love the, the tunnel you added with the seeing all the way through the other end of the tunnel. That's a great little feature. Here it is before you put the tunnel on. Right, and then I had to rebuild some of the train. I wasn't happy with it because it did not have a tender and the little passenger cars just didn't look right. So the tender and the passenger car is hand built. So I just used a block of wood to make the little tender and passenger car, but you have to understand they're like the size of my fingernail. Yeah, look at yeah, it's kind of hard to see from the picture, but there you can see that just how teeny the whole thing is. Right. And this is a train I just built on a whim. It's just built out of little blocks of wood. I love the name of it, the Weeby Dinky. Right, and a friend of ours who is no longer with us, Greg Usar, who was one of our uh, subscribers on the channel, that's what he called it, was the Weeby Dinky, so that's what I named it. And this is a little passenger car, too, that I made just out of a little block of wood. I love the, the way it turned out. And I really love this little scene you put together, the Christmas room. Oh, I know. That one's just fun. I had to put extra lights in the tree. It came with one singular light, but that's no fun. That's no fun. The Christmas tree turned out great, but the, you added a train. Right. And it just isn't Christmas without a toy train. Exactly. And this little train is about two inches long. It's made out of sculpty clay and seed beads for the wheel trucks. <laughs> it's just, the whole thing is so tiny, but what a wonderful addition to the scene. So this is how the scene looked when you first started putting it together from the kit, and it just, it lacks. I love the fact that you added a tender and a passenger car. Right, and then the locomotive itself lacked because I ended up using the back of an earring to make a smokestack for it. And that turned out really neat. And then having the tracks just go off a cliff here. Yeah, I, I had to make a tunnel for the train. And I love the fact that you can see all the way through to the other end. Right, what is commonly called the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> And this little thing, I was just, I was making a bracelet from plastic tubing and I got looking at it and I thought I can make something from this and so I created a little mug with a lemon slice. And when, when you say little, I mean, look at your finger, to, that is a tiny, right, tiny little mug. The lemon slice was from another kit. So part of my other hobbies are creating buildings that no longer exist. They've been torn down for whatever reason. And this is the old high school in Hurricane, Utah that used to be located there. It's been torn down. It's now a park. So I just decided to build a very small version of it. And of course it has lights. Of course. And it's really, really tiny. Right. About two inches long. Wow. Which I didn't even know what that scale would work out to be. Uh, teeny tiny scale. One seven hundredth scale. Something like that. I mean, yeah. really something like that. Yep. Most of it's just built out of scrap wood and balsa wood. Yeah, it seems that for the most part you build things by just rescuing things out of the scrap bin. Right, just a little end. Of, like this side is only just a little over a half an inch in height. Yeah, and just little teeny tiny bits and pieces of wood from the scrap bin. Right. That's pretty neat. That's the flag. That's, a, that's a big flag. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
big if you're a flea or something. Yeah. That's in the trees, you almost can't see it. And this is actually what we came to talk about. Right. <laughs> We're finally getting around to that. But your your current fascination has been building travel trailers and mobile homes. Right. I used to build them when I was a kid. I used to build cab trailers and mobile homes. This little travel trailer scene turned out so neat. Started off just as plywood. Yeah, just a little piece of scrap plywood. And then I used it as a stencil. You give me a pencil holder that was a travel trailer. And I used this leftover pieces as a stencil to cut these out. Well, it worked. It did. <laughs> <laughs> Just trace around what you've got and then cut it out. Right. And I love the system that you've come up with for making doors. Right, I just use the, the foil tape and then just score it to make it look like that quilted metal I had on so many homes. Yeah, I don't know what was with that quilted metal, but so many of the travel trailers and mobile homes had that. It was either a styler to make it stronger, I'm not sure which. Well, it's not a door if it doesn't open. Well, of course not. You've got to have a proper doorknob and a working hinge. Right, which ended up being a wood screw for the doorknob. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works. And the, the hinge works really well, too. Right. So all of my models are notorious for having lights, which are pretty tiny. Well, every, a proper model is always a lit model. Right, and I just use battery-operated lights, but they're just, they're tiny, like a little seed light. And uh, to make sense of this one, this is a little tiny jewelry bead. And since this is a camp trailer, they're just using a kerosene lantern. Yeah, so you only had to build one light. Right. Well, at least for the inside, on the outside, I went hog wild. Yeah, well, you've got to have uh, a fire and all kinds of things exactly. out there. Exactly, <laughs> an outside lantern and a fire, and yeah, all of it has to be illuminated. And for the most part, this is the what most people are going to see. It's just the outside of the trailer. Right. But I love the fact that you made a removable roof so you can see inside. Right. Because sometimes you want to see inside. Take a peek. It looks just like the trailer we had when I was a kid. <laughs> And of course you have to have screens on the doors because, well, there are mosquitoes. Right, you have to use just a fine mesh that looks like a window screen for that scale. And again, the interior is, a lot of it I printed off the internet, like the stove. I just printed the surface units and scaled them down to fit. Same with the covering on the sink and the table. And the bed and curtains are just leftover fabric remnants and ribbon. Yeah, I really love the effect with the folded fabric. That turns out really neat. Right, I used to use Mod Podge on one side of the fabric and then pinch pleat it by use just finger pressure once the Mod Podge is dried. And then your little pots and pans, I, they'll just blow my mind. They're fun. I just make those out of uh, like tubing, like you buy for model railroading and just cut it into a small piece. That looks so cool. So I made a propane tank out of just a piece of dowel and what you see there is a seed bead that is the connector and a piece of copper wire. And then the valve to turn it on and off is a jewelry cap bead. <laughs> and then, of course, you've got the little toolbox here as well. Oh, you need tools every time you're camping. <laughs> so I made the windows out of plexiglass, which was really thin. It looks thick here, but you have to remember how small this trailer is. And I did the vintage type windows. The Jalloweed yes, windows. Yeah. Yes. Those are so popular, especially on uh, camp trailers and mobile homes. Oh, right. And this is the part where I went hog wild and I had to create all of the accoutrement for camping. Yeah, a whole scene. Exactly, the, everything. The cooler, and uh, you can see how tiny that is, and the, the, the bottles are actually a couple of seed beads glued together. And the ice crystals, are the that's really cool. The plexiglass, I just broke plexiglass into tiny pieces for ice. This is kind of empty scene, but this is where you let your imagination run wild. Yeah, so what can you add that will make this feel like actually camping up in the mountains? Absolutely. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> yes. That's a crummy thing. Yes. <laughs> or a crappy thing. Uh, I'm not well, sure. everybody's got to go. <laughs>
Well, there's the almost finished part. I keep adding to it. Well, uh, no model's ever finished. No, never. So you've you've been adding and adding and adding. Yeah, every chance I get. <laughs> but right here, it's looking pretty darn good. Well, I was having so much fun, I decided to make another one. A red one. Yes, a red and white one. Uh-huh, so you can distinguish it from the other one. <laughs> exactly. It looks like it's basically the same trailer. It is. I just put more lighting in this one. It's probably parked where they have electricity. So it's sort of like a sequel to a movie. Yeah, or a sequin. A uh, sequin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I use a lot of those in making lamps and stuff. But the, the sequel to a movie almost never turns out uh, as, as good as the original. This is more like Godfather 2, where the sequel is better than the original. Well, you never know. You just never know. So here I made a mobile home, or I used to call them a house trailer back in the day. But these are different from a travel trailer. Well, I'm really surprised at how many people, especially on Facebook and stuff, don't seem to know that these are not travel trailers. Right, or they call them a camper, and it's like, no, they're not a camper. They don't go in the back of a pickup truck. No, they're a home. They're a home. People lived in these back in the 50s. This type of trailer was intended to be lived in as a residential home. Think of them as a mobile apartment. Yeah, and I think after the war, there were a lot of people who were not locked down and they were moving around a great deal. This was just something that fit that lifestyle. Right, they could uh, buy a home and literally take their home with them to the next job. So this was uh, actually a kit I got on eBay from a place called Jam and Hobby and it's a City Classics HO scale. So if you're a true trailerite, you would know the make and model of this and this is a Roberts mobile home. So basically, I, it was just the kit. It didn't have an interior, but I wanted to put a full interior in it. So I just used strip wood and some plastic strips to create the interior on the inside. I also printed off the wood paneling and wallpaper from the internet. Being HO scale, it is so small and very difficult to uh, create parts for it. Keep in mind that those are the little seed beads for canisters. In keeping with your tradition, all the wood is out of the scrap bin. Right, I just make everything out of scraps. Yeah, found, found art. Found art, yes. <laughs> so, because it's so small, even making curtains and draperies for this, I end up using paper because it, the cloth doesn't behave well. No, uh, it, just, would look, <laughs> it would look funny too. Right, just pinch pleat paper and make it for drapes. Even the bedspreads on those bunk beds is paper. And of course, all of my models have to have lighting. And, and light fixtures. <laughs> right, I put in actual fixtures just using jewelry beads again. I'll bet it's tricky working in this small oh, scale. Oh man, it is really tricky. So all of these, I use those little teeny tiny LED lights. Yeah, it's hard to get incandescent bulbs uh, th that are small enough to work in well, a situation like this. In this size, no way. <laughs> yeah, for, for some of the railroad lights, I've used LEDs, but usually I can get away with incandescence, but you could never put incandescence in something like this. No, and in this particular model, the little LED light is like the size of a head of a pin. Lights just add so much to a model. Oh, and I just get such a kick out of when they all come on and everything works. Yeah, it's actually really scary. Well, a little bit, and I just test everything as I go along. Once I complete one of these little lamps out of beads, I test it with a battery just to make sure it's going to light up. Yeah, and boy, every time, though, that I put the battery or the test to it, it's like, oh, tell me something hasn't screwed up. Oh, and I've, I've done that, you know, get it all together and it doesn't work. Yeah, one of the <laughs> lights is burned out. Right. And it's like, well, it's too late to do anything about it now. Right, but this one does work. <laughs> yeah, every light came on right 
And with models, it's perfectly okay to be a window peeper. That's my favorite part, is to look through the windows to see the tiny interior. And I liked this pitch pleating technique so much, I thought, you know, we need to make cab curtains for the Silverton Northern locomotive. Uh, why don't I have you make cab curtains using that technique? Right, we used to do this when I was a kid to make dollhouse curtains. It works fine. It works great. So we headed off to find an appropriate fabric. Right, we found some at Joann's that looked really good. And then how did you go about this? I just used Mod Podge on one side of the fabric and just let it dry really well and then just pinch pleat it like I did the paper. Okay, and then these metal rings? They're part of a, a like a necklace chain, just using the loops and putting them on the end of the fabric. And then I fabricated these uh, these curtain rods. Right. And they're not like a Travis rod, just a, a regular rod to go through the rings and hold it in the locomotive. And then I took the whole thing over to the paint booth to add smoke and filth and cinders and soot and so mm -hmm. on. Because everything that goes into the locomotive, of course, is going to be filthy. Right. It might not have been filthy going in, but it's going to be filthy within the next few hours. Right. <laughs> And one of the neat things about the Mod Podge is once I got them in here, I kind of wanted to tie them back and shape them around so that we can see the, the fireman and the locomotive engineer and so on. So I was able to kind of move them and pinch them and they actually kind of hold their form. Yes, that really helps. And then that way you can see the, the figures inside the locomotive. Right. And that's much better. Right. Well, anyway, always projects. Oh, now I'm starting on my childhood home, rebuilding that <laughs> one and painting a cuckoo clock. <laughs> painting the cuckoo clock. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel, hop on over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe by clicking on the blue button right, right there. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday with some Tuesday stuff. Right. <laughs> we'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.